right, somebody wanted to know how we use saccades and pursuit, and how is that different from what we normally test when we're testing extraocular motility. So normally when we're testing the eye movements, we're really only testing the ductions or the versions. Duction is when you're moving one eye only. Version is when you're moving them together. And so it usually looks like this. Look right, look left, look up, look down. And if so, they have full versions. We usually aren't even testing the ductions. And the second piece that we're looking for is alignment. Alignment. Are the eyes straight? And we do that with a cover-uncover test or an alternate cover test if we're trying to bring out a latent deviation rather than a manifest deviation with a cover test. So if someone's not complaining about double vision or jumping eye, then versions, full, and alignment is all, is, you're done. It is normal. We don't really have to test the saccata pursuit in that person because their complaint is, I lost my vision. It's an afferent complaint. So testing the efferent system is kind of a waste of time. We do it because it's part of the exam. However, what if their complaint is something related to movement or alignment? Now you do have to test the saccade and the pursuit because just testing the version alone is not adequate to get to that person's complaint. So if the co chief complaint is, I see double diplopia, or things are jumping, oscillopsia, then you have to do more than just the versions. Versions and alignment in the primary position are fine for screening, for normal people, for people who have complaints that have nothing to do with their efferent pathway. But once the complaint is efferent, then you have to test both the saccade and the pursuit. You're doing the pursuit with the versions. And with the pursuit, what you're looking for is that it's smooth. Smooth pursuit. We want the pursuit to be smooth. And so if the pursuit is not smooth, that means the pursuit pathway has been damaged. That pursuit pathway starts in the ipsilateral parietal occipital temporal region and transmits to the brainstem. And for horizontal gaze, that's in your pons through the sixth nerve nucleus and the parapontine reticular formation. And in the midbrain, that's the vertical gaze center, interstitial nucleus of Cajal, area of Darkschwitz, rostral interstitial medial longitudinal fasciculus. That's a vertical gaze center. So we got a horizontal gaze center and a vertical gaze center in your brainstem, which are the final common pathways for receiving pursuit information from the ipsilateral parietal occipital temporal lobe and for the saccade contralateral frontal eye field. So contralateral frontal eye field also has to talk to brainstem nuclei. So what we're looking for in pursuit is actually an assessment of this entire neural network. Anything that damages anywhere along the network can damage your pursuit. And the same thing for saccades. Anything that damages the saccade, which is a fast movement. Look at my nose, look at my pen, look at my nose, look at my pen. And the saccade can be dysmetric, which means it can overshoot, hypermetric, or undershoot, hypometric or the saccade could intrude onto your vision. You're not trying to do anything and all of a sudden you're saccading. So saccadic intrusions, these are like macro square wave jerks. That happens like this, like one or two, it's fine. It's super common in neurodegenerative disease. It just means you have breakdown in the network somewhere. But what if it's constantly saccade intrusion? That thing's called ocular flutter. Or if it's multivectorial saccadic intrusions, that thing's called opsoclonus. Those are all always pathologic. So we test the saccade and the pursuit when people have a problem in their neural network. It helps us to establish that there's some connection problem. It doesn't tell you what the cause is, but it helps to understand complaints like diplopia and oscillopsia. And so some conditions, the versions might look completely full but they still have a problem. And so for the saccade, one of those things is called an internuclear ophthalmoplegia, an INO. So in an INO, they literally might have full version here, but when you do the saccade, there's a saccadic delay or adduction lag. And in the contralateral eye, a dissociated horizontal abducting astagmus. So in that setting, the saccade brings it out. Or if you have a supranuclear palsy, we can test the saccade and pursuit because a, a degenerative disease like progressive supranuclear palsy is going to be much more sensitive to saccade and pursuit abnormality initially 
the, by the time they can't look down with the version, that's like end stage. So we're going to be looking for these early symptoms and early signs that something's wrong with the network. Just having the problem doesn't tell you what the cause is. And in fact, it's not even that localizing. It just means network, network issues, connectivity issues, just like on your computer. It's like looking for glitches. So there are clearly some things where the versions and the alignment with the cover test are not enough, and you must test the saccades in the pursuit. You're going to use words to describe what you saw, and then you're going to put it into a bigger context to determine where along the network you think is the problem. But the finding by itself is not localizing. It just tells you we got to look for the company it keeps so that we can try and define both an etiology and a localization.